Welcome to the Nourish Child Podcast, a show about childhood nutrition, feeding kids, and dealing with the ups and downs of growing a healthy child. Here's your host, registered dietitian and childhood nutrition expert, Jill Castle. I'm Jill, the host of The Nourish Child. Let me ask you something. Do you wonder if your child is getting all the nutrition they need? Or do you feel unsure about what's going on with your child and their eating? Feeding kids is H-A-R-D hard. I've raised four of my own children, and as a pediatric dietitian who works with kids and families, I know the job of nourishing and nurturing our children is a big one, full of emotional swings, frustrations, and worries. That's why I created TheNourishedChild.com, the ultimate parent resource for children's nutrition and feeding. There, you will find free articles, e-guides, and programs to help you better understand your child, food, your own feeding, and their eating. Check out The Nourished Child today. Head to TheNourishedChild.com. And now for the show. Hey friends, welcome back to The Nourished Child Podcast. Many of you worry about what your child is eating and how much. You get worried about how many calories, how much fat, are they having too much sugar? With all the attention on childhood obesity, wanting your child to make healthy food choices is totally natural, but it's not always easy to implement these healthier ways of eating and healthier foods without harming a child's emotional well-being. And while it can be tempting to put a child on a weight loss diet, you don't have to, and I don't recommend it. It's not advised because number one, it can harm your child's self-esteem and body image. But also we know that going on and off diets over the years has been shown to damage metabolism, slowing it down and encouraging more weight gain. The best overall approach, my friends, is to just encourage healthy habits from eating habits to activity habits, sleep habits. There's a breadth of habits that we can be helping our children gain health through them. Today, we are talking about easy ways or easy food tips for helping children who have larger bodies eat well without putting them on a diet. So I'm going to outline a few easy nutrition changes that will help your child eat better. Now, for a quick announcement before we get going, I know some of you recognize and know that I do work with private clients. I typically work with private families for a longer period of time so that we can really get traction on their worries and concerns and change things that just aren't working. I was doing six-month packages. I've just added a new three-month package and I have just a couple of spots open in my private practice. So if this is something that interests you, reach out to me by email and I will get you set up with a conversation with me to see if we are a good fit for each other. The other thing I wanted to tell you about, speaking of conversations with me, there's going to be a new feature on the podcast and it is going to be all about having a one-time counseling session with me with real parents who have real concerns about their real kids. So I will invite you on to the show. If you're a parent who would like to have conversation with me, you'll be invited on to the Nourish Child podcast. You will be anonymous. We will uh, not share your name or any personal identifying factors, but we will have a one-time counseling session. And I probably won't solve all your problems, but we'll help you gain some insight and some direction on next steps. Again, if this is of interest to you, reach out by going to the nourishchild.com forward slash podcast. And you can see a little speak pipe audio tool that you can record your question on directly toward to me, or you can just email me at jill at jillcastle.com and let me know that you'd like to come on the show and what your questions or concerns are. And I will reach out and invite you and, and get you all set up. 
Okay, that's it for today. Now for the show. How do you help the overweight child eat well without harming their emotional well-being? Most of us think about changing their diet, but this can get out of hand, resulting in food restriction, dieting, and other tactics that may backfire in the future. There are many ways to help the overweight child, including increasing their physical activity, working on sleep and screen habits, and of course, improving nutrition. I'm outlining a few easy nutrition changes that will help your larger bodied child eat better. Number one, some nutrients are way more filling than others, and you need to know about these nutrients. What am I talking about? Protein, fiber, and fat. Protein is a filling nutrient. I've talked about this nutrient on this channel before. It increases the thermic effect of food, meaning that it increases the amount of energy burned after eating, especially if you're eating animal-based proteins like dairy foods or meat. This increase in body temperature is interpreted by the body or by the mind as fullness. Protein is also slower to digest. It sits in the tummy longer and it lingers there. And it also encourages the release of gut hormones that cue fullness. So protein is a really powerful filling nutrient. Fiber is the second one. Now fiber bulks up the food that you eat. It can thicken it or gel it in the stomach. And this can cause that sensation of fullness. It also slows down digestion and the emptying of the stomach. So again, fiber is another nutrient that helps your child feel full. When we combine protein, fiber, and fat, it's almost magical. Studies show that in combination, these three cue fullness, slow down digestion, and keep your child fuller longer. There's also some research that suggests in combination, these three help steady blood sugar, so keeping it nice and even, and helps your child be more aware of that sensation of fullness, or what we call satiety awareness. So how can we make this practical? I have a couple of easy tips for you. Number one, when planning your meals or your snacks, think about the protein food first. What are you going to include in that snack or in that meal that is going to be a source of protein, whether it be animal-based or plant-based? It doesn't matter. Pick the protein first. Secondly, add a fiber-containing food. So what are those foods? We're talking about whole grains, like a whole grain cereal or a whole grain roll or bagel, for example. We're also talking about fruits and vegetables. Those are full of fiber. And again, add bulk to the meal, which is going to translate into fullness and slower digestion. And of course, I'm a big one around this idea when you're planning meals that you try to include at least four of the main five food groups at mealtime and two of the main five food groups at snack time. Number two, start with age-appropriate portions. So I like to call these starter portions. They are the sort of recommended portion size or serving size for children based on their age. So they're age-appropriate. So we're not going to give a cup of milk to a young toddler. That's too large of a portion size for them. So for example, for a toddler... When we're talking about dairy or milk or non-dairy substitutes, we're talking about a half a cup or even less, maybe a third of a cup if it's a really young toddler. We are talking about, when we think about grains and vegetables and fruits, we're talking about a tablespoon per year of age. So if you have a two-year-old, two tablespoons of veggies, maybe you're serving corn or peas or two tablespoons of blueberries. If you have a four-year-old, we're talking about four tablespoons. 
So if you have a four-year-old, you would start with four tablespoons of a fruit or a vegetable or a whole grain or a protein source. And that actually can be four tablespoons is the equivalent of a quarter of a cup for a four-year-old to start out with. Now, when we're talking about older children, a cup of milk is a starter portion. It's the same for a teenager also, one cup. If we're talking about fruits and vegetables, it's a half a cup for a child and a full cup for a teenager, a child over 13. And when we talk about meats, protein sources, beans, things like that, two tablespoons is about an ounce. And generally in a child, we want to start with two or three ounces. So anywhere from four to six tablespoons or a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup. And for a teenager's three to four ounces of protein, when we get up to three and four ounces of protein, you can basically take your hand and look at the palm of your hand. And that's about three to four ounces for a child to start with a protein source. Now, even easier tip for you, when we're talking about starter portions and getting the portions right, you know, for younger children, you can use a salad plate as the main meal plate. This is good for elementary and younger children. And then when kids get older, you can graduate up to a dinner plate. So like a 10 inch regular dinner plate for middle and high school kids. That kind of naturally keeps the portions in the right place. And it's, it's a lot easier than actually measuring things out. For snacks, you can use a saucer. So cup and saucer. The saucer is that smaller plate, and that's a good place to start with snack time. It keeps, again, the portions in a reasonable place and allows you to get at least two food groups on that plate for a snack. Number three, you can make snacks healthier with simple swaps. These, are, again, are small, short, easy tips so that you can help the larger bodied child or the overweight child eat well. So snack time is a good time to bring in fruits and vegetables. For example, a hummus plate where you might have a little pile of hummus in the middle and surround it with different vegetables. Or you might do a fruit plate and in the center have a vanilla flavored Greek yogurt dip for them to use. You can make other swaps like instead of chips, try popcorn. Why? Popcorn's much higher in fiber. Again, remember that filling nutrient. Instead of cheesy crackers, you might try a whole grain cracker like Triscuits with a slice or a couple slices of cheese. Why? Again, we're offering more fiber and we're offering more protein. These are foods that are going to help children stay fuller longer and help them get to the next meal without asking you for snacks all day long. Instead of fishy crackers, you can try cashews and dried cranberries. Again, more protein, more fiber, and you're offering healthy fats when you offer nuts. Another tip, don't serve the same snacks every day. Try to switch it up. Use snack time as an opportunity to change things, to tackle those foods that your child might not be getting during the day. For example, if they start the day and they don't have any fruits and vegetables, you can use snack time to pull those foods in so they get a better variety and overall nutrition in their diet. Number four, my fourth tip is that some foods will need more monitoring and strategizing. So what am I talking about? I am talking about sweets and fried foods. These foods, while they are so tasty, they are not that rich in nutrients, and they certainly don't have those filling nutrients we talked about earlier, protein and fiber. So sweets are okay to have. I have nothing against sweets. I pretty much have a sweet every day of my life, and my kids always did too. It's not about how much. Well, it is about how much, but what it's really about is how these sweets fit in the overall balance of the diet. Multiple sweets each day probably isn't going to work out in the long run for your child in terms of their overall health. A sweet treat once a day, this will be okay for many kids, especially if they're active each day. So you need to find the sweet spot 
Some families offer treats every day. Others only offer them on the weekends. I don't advise that you follow a no sweets policy because that can cause other issues in children. It can cause them to feel like they're scarce or forbidden and start to seek them out more frequently and sneak them. If your child is overly focused on sweets or can't control themselves around sweets, I want you to think about how frequently they're getting them and whether that you have a strategy around them and you're monitoring them day to day. Fried foods, again, French fries, potato chips, tortilla style chips. These are higher in fat, but poor in other nutrients. Again, you're going to strike a balance here. You don't have to eliminate these altogether, but you can use them as a side dish in a starter portion. Combine those fried foods with other nutritious foods like fruits and vegetables or whole grains or lean sources of protein. This is the way to sort of navigate these foods that need more monitoring and more strategizing, especially if you find that these are foods that your larger body child are more drawn to. These are the foods you're going to have to pay more attention to. Now, I do have a printable for you that's free for you to download. I will include it in the description. It's basically a graphic icon of how to balance all those nutritious, high fiber, high protein foods with sweets and treats. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Nourish Child Podcast, where the number one goal is to help you grow a nourished child inside and out.